The following is sponsored by Hi ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the 2017 Sedona International Film Festival. I'm Tanya June Moore and we are here live at the Sedona Rouge Media Room. I have the pleasure of being in the seat with Sue Williams with Death by Design. That's it. Uh, a documentary. Yes. Film, full length documentary. Yep. Yep. And please uh, tell our audience what your documentary is about. Well, Death by Design is an, in, an investigation into the electronics industry. And um, it started as actually more of a, per, a biography of China's leading environmental activist, but it then became a much bigger film uh, where we look at how the industry is impacting the, not just workers, but the, envir the global environment. And we have also a section in Silicon Valley about the industry's past in the U.S., which is really not a pretty one. And, so, and really, it, it's the end game for what happens with these electronics. Am, am I, did I it, it is. You know, I, it's, you know, everything that's in your device is, comes out at the other end at some point, and they're filled. They're, they're basically toxic elements. You know, there are, there are all sorts of heavy metals and toxic chemicals in them, so that those affect the workers who make them. Mm -hmm. They affect the communities around the factories because all that stuff gets into the air and the water and the soil. Mm -hmm. And then we use them and we toss them and they end up back in China, not very far from where they were first made, really? where they're kind of taken apart in sort of medieval work sheds over open flames. So all the toxins get back into the air and um, travel around the globe. And when you were making this documentary, mm. and I think this is one that I've been waiting to, to be made, to be honest, but when you were making this documentary, was this the path that you thought it was going to take? No, you know, I first started making the film because I met Ma Jun, who's China's leading envir environmental activist. And he had started looking through government data which showed industries that were polluting the environment and violations against them. And he was really struck by how many were in the electronics industry. Mm -hmm. And so I started thinking I was going to make a profile of him, but then I found out that in Silicon Valley, when the industry was working there in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s, they were doing just the same thing. And so in Santa Clara County, which is the center of Silicon Valley, there are more super fun sites than in any other county in the country okay. and more than anywhere else. A super fun site is a site that a company has polluted so badly that the government tells the company they have to clean it up. So IBM, Intel, Apple, they're, they're all super fun sites in California and these are sites that are going to take not 10 or 20 years to clean up, they're going to take up to 300 years. Google headquarters um, happens to be on a, an old industrial site. I mean, it's a beautiful new building now, but it was built on top of a company called Fairchild Semiconductor. And the trichloroethylene that polluted Silicon Valley at the time is now pluming up through the water, through the soil, into the offices of the Google engineers. So this is a, a sort of environmental catastrophe that nobody wants to talk about. This is very Aaron Brockovich. It is a little Aaron Brockovich, yeah. And I have to say that filming, you know, everyone who sees the film says, you know, you must have had such extraordinary, it must have been so difficult to film in China, which of course it always is. Mm -hmm. But actually it was really difficult to film in Silicon Valley. And nobody wanted to talk to us. And we would stand in the street, you know, filming Google headquarters, because obviously we couldn't get in, or outside, even of the old IBM building, which isn't even, operated by IBM. Security guards are there within 90 seconds. And they're very aggressive. You know, they take your photo, they take, they write down your license plate number, they say they're gonna, you know, figure out who we are. Quite intimidating. Really? So that, that's California. 
<laughs> so it was worse in California than it was well, in China. You know, in China, we just made sure never to get seen. Right. You know, we, we operated very much under the radar. Um, uh, and what, I mean, I know what the message is, and I, I think the audience does, but what is it that you really want people who won't be able to see the film? Because right. they're not, it's, you know, a lot of documentaries get made and they never get seen. What is it that you want people to, to take away from Well, I this? want people to think about how they use their devices, especially their phones, and how, you know, every two years when a new one comes out, just ask yourself, do you really need it? And what are you going to do with your old phone? Try and get rid of it responsibly, although that's another sort of complicated problem too. But also I think ask we need to ask the brands to be transparent and mm -hmm. honest about how these things are made and mm -hmm. unmade. And that we can do by, uh, so our website's called deathbydesignfilm.com. Mm -hmm. dot com. Com. And so we have all sorts of organizations there that are working to kind of publicize these issues. We've got petitions online. We've also got really simple little tips you can use to make your devices last longer. Um, so I want people, uh, first of all, actually, people need to become aware of this because mm -hmm. I think the story of the electronics industry, you know, it's a young industry. It's like 25 years old. Right, it's not new. It, it, I mean, it's very new. I it's mean. very new. And, and so most of the stories that have come out about have been these tales of heroic genius like Steve Jobs. Right. right the quintessential Steve Jobs. So we think everyone's brilliant and it's, and, and of course, it's an industry that's done fantastic things. I mean, I love my phone. I, how could I live without it? Mm -hmm. um, but no one's ever sort of taken the lid off the industry before and said, hold on a second, let's look at how these things are made and what they're doing to, to us, to our to public health, to the environment, to changing patterns of weather, because that's where the film ends up. Um, so, you know, it's time it's time. It's time for people to know about this, and um, and it's not just all heroic genius and people making right. hundreds of millions of dollars and whatever. Making our lives easier to connect. Yeah. yeah. What got you involved in the Sedona International Film Festival? What was it that you, you had to bring this film here? Um, well, I was really fortunate. We were invited, and I immediately wanted to come because I've always wanted to come to Sedona. Mm -hmm. I'd always heard how beautiful it was, and I'd heard what a great festival it is, and um, I know other filmmakers who've been here and who all said, you gotta go, you gotta go, it's gonna be great, so it has been. And we do call it the Filmmakers Festival. I mean, can I guess you, you treat us very well, no wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You do. <laughs> and, I mean, so have you, did, I know you haven't seen too many films, did you have any experiences here that you could share with our crowd? Um, you know what's been nice was after my screening yesterday, for example, I went over to Starbucks to get a coffee afterwards, and uh, I ran into half a dozen people who'd been in the audience, and they all wanted to talk to me, and so it was really fun. You know, it's just, it's, I think it's small enough that you can have those really nice encounters right. um, with other filmmakers or with people in the audience. And how so, was the Q&A at, at your screening? Oh, it was, it was great. I think the audience was a little... You know, people tend to be quite shocked at the end of the movie and not and not quite know where to put themselves because it does put you in a little bit of an uncomfortable position. You've got this great device in your pocket, right? And um, and now you look at it a little bit differently. And that's exactly what I think you want them to yeah, do, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.